This is Mark Goldberg with the UN Affairs blog, UN Dispatch. Very pleased today to be talking to Oshin Walton. Uh, hello, Oshin. Hello, Mark. So, so uh, Oshin, first of all, sort of where are you right now? Uh, I'm based in Po, in TSF's headquarters. Uh, po is a provincial city um, in France. We're based in southwestern France, um, approximately one hour from uh, the Atlantic Ocean and one hour from the Pyrenees. So, so this is a transatlantic devalogue, uh, and, and TSF, if you didn't catch it, stands for Telecom Sans Frontières, which is an NGO that uh, we will be discussing today. It's uh, Telecommunications Workers Without Borders, as the, uh, the name would suggest. Um, and, and we should probably issue a, a quick disclaimer that the, the UN Dispatch, my blog, is sponsored by the UN Foundation, and TSF receives some sponsorship as well from the UN Foundation. So with that out of the way... Um, what, what's your uh, role? What's your position at TSF Ocean? Um, I'm head of communications and international relations, so um, I'm in, in charge of all the aspects in communications, partners relations, fundraising, um, press relations. Um, so I'm mainly based at the headquarters, but I also do parts of the field. And I was in uh, Haiti running humanitarian calling operations and heading TSF's mission in uh, in Haiti for three weeks uh, last month. So maybe maybe this is a good good entry to to explain sort of what exactly TSF is and, and what you guys do. Well, TSF is is mainly an emergency NGO. Uh, whenever an emergency happens in uh, either a hurricane or an earthquake, um, communications or our infrastructure, the local infrastructure, is often damaged uh, or simply destroyed. And in emergencies, aid agencies uh, need communications to do the work, as anybody would need uh, communications in an office. Um, and so TSF uh, has two main activities in emergencies. One is to set up uh, emergency, what we call it, emergency communication centers for aid agencies. So uh, UN organizations, NGOs, local authorities working um, to help uh, uh, um, those affected. Uh, and these emergency communication centers um, uh, provide Internet access, um, phone and fax lines, and all the IT equipment needed um, in an office and in the field office also. And then we have uh, another activity, which is, and that's how... Uh, CSF started um, in 1998, so 10 years ago, uh, is to provide free calls to those affected so that they can give news on the situation, uh, call their family either in the country or abroad to give news and um, ask for help. Great. And, and where, um, where have you guys deployed? Where are you guys deployed um, well, around the world? We, we, we are, we're just back from a, a one-month mission in Haiti after um, the country was uh, stricken by four uh, cyclones in, in, in one month. Um, so the, the situation was very difficult, and um, we um, um, deployed communication centers in Gonaïve, which was the most affected area, and we also provided uh, free calls, so we run humanitarian calling operations. And now we just deployed yesterday to Honduras, which is... Uh, um, uh, affected by heavy floods. Uh, there's been uh, uh, a lot of rain in the last few days and um, that's, that led to uh, mudslides and, uh, um, and also floods. So we have, it, we have a team which deployed from Nicaragua, which is uh, where we have one of our bases. We have four uh, bases in, in total. And the Nicaragua base covers the Americas and the Caribbean. And so uh, our first team deployed from Nicaragua yesterday to, uh, to support uh, the United Nations disaster um, assessment and coordination teams. Maybe this is a, a, good, a, a good way or opportunity maybe for, for you to explain. So, so how, I mean, how does this actually work when, when you get deployed? Do you get a call from someone? Does the, know, does the Secretary General call up TSF and, and, and say we need, uh, we need telecommunications equipment and stations in, in Honduras? And, and how long does it take to deploy uh, your, your workers and, and how many people go? I'm just kind of curious how, how sort of the operation actually works. Sure. Well, there are actually two, two cases. One is, um, so the emergency happens and um, we get a call from the UN. We have a partnership with the UN uh, to be first responder whenever an emergency happens to provide communications 
uh, to um, facilitate coordination uh, of humanitarian aid. So we um, we get a call um, from the UN in Geneva or in one of the regional offices, uh, and we can then deploy. The second option is also um, we um, there's an immediate emergency. There's like a, 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 an earthquake, a huge earthquake in an area, and um, we deploy within. Uh, we take the decision to deploy based on our experience. We know that there will be uh, big needs uh, in emergency comms, and we'll deploy um, spontaneously. So we'll decide to deploy to, to this emergency. And the objective of TSF is to be there within 24 hours. So that's why we have uh, these regional offices, is not only to prepare um, and, and uh, coordinate better between emergencies with uh, the partners that we work with in, in, in the field, but it, it's also to um, get there faster, so to be there within 24 hours, because that's when you're actually saving lives. Um, and, and, and so you said that, that a team deployed, so we're talking on Friday, and you, you, uh, you said that a team deployed to Honduras on uh, Thursday, is that correct? Exactly. That was yesterday on Thursday, so they've, uh, they landed yesterday. They uh, um, coordinated with the UNDAC team from OSHA. Um, they Maybe met you, you should explain those, those, uh, those uh, uh, what, what that means. Acronyms, yes. Yeah, the acronyms, uh, yeah. The UNDAC is the United Nations Disaster Assessment and Coordination Teams. Mm -hmm. They're a part of OCHA, which is the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs of the United Nations. So they are in charge, whenever an emergency happens, of uh, supporting the government in coordinating humanitarian aid. Mm -hmm. And also they would conduct the first assessments and support the government in assessing the needs. Uh, so they would hold um, uh, the coordination meetings uh, every evening, which take place uh, uh, in in, uh, in the field, um, and they would talk to the different agencies to see what the needs are, uh, and they would assess um, uh, they would assess the needs uh, directly in the field. So our job, of course, is to provide uh, communications to those who are um, actually coordinating. Uh, the the uh, uh, the, uh, the humanitarian aid. So so the the, the, the first stop of the, of the TSF uh, uh, workers were were with sort of UN agencies to, to set up their communications equipment. Yes. Well, we 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 bring our own equipment. Um, mm -hmm. and the UN would count on TSF to bring um, to bring its equipment, and this gives time for um, the uh, UN to bring their own equipment. Okay, so, so sort, of, uh, sort of telecommunications workers, first response, first responders. Exactly, exactly. So, so maybe maybe you can walk me through. So, what, what for example, what what would the team in Honduras be doing today? Uh, well, I from the information I have, uh, I got this morning is that they were going on an assessment. So they were going. Um, we have a crew of two at the moment. Um, there. Uh, each person will go with one of the UNAC teams to the affected areas uh, to um, assess what the needs are. First in telecommunications to see what the situation is. They'll assess the uh, networks, the local networks, see if there's if the landlines have been destroyed, if there's uh, a mobile network, uh, if there's an internet access in uh, in, the, in the city, um, and they also support uh, the UNAC team with. Uh, their assessment. So if, if um, uh, the team members need to uh, report back, if they need to communicate with their, um, with their base office back in the capital, um, TSF will provide communication, so both phone and um, voice communications and internet also. And, and so what, I'm kind of fascinated by, by the, the equipment that, that, that your workers must bring to these seemingly pretty remote and, and Pretty devastated areas, and 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 how? I mean, for example, how long would it set up? Would it take to set up an internet connection in in the middle of a, of, a, of a of a village that had been destroyed by a flood? Well, the equipment that we have is actually very light and very mobile. So it weighs. Uh, it's the size of a, uh, a data transmitter, which enables us to connect to the internet and, and recreate uh, communications in, in emergencies. Is actually the size of a laptop. So it's very light. Um, it's mobile and you can uh, set it up in 10 minutes. 
So we can we can set up a communication center in in a matter of minutes in in, in emergencies. Hmm. And uh, um, I wanted to maybe ask you a little bit about this this humanitarian sort of calling uh, operation as well. Is is that? I mean, do, do, do you put that on the same uh, sort of level as, as setting up sort of communications for for uh, aid workers? Do do you, do you, do you um, set up these humanitarian calling centers sort of mm-hmm. as quickly as you would you would set up uh, commu- like communication for, uh, for for the aid workers? Our, our priority will be to uh, to help those who are saving lives. Um, so our priority will be to set up. Uh, these communication centers for aid agencies uh, so that they can uh, send reports, communicate back to their offices saying what their, the, the needs are, uh, sending lists of medicine, uh, coordinating the helicopters' uh, arrivals. Um, so our priority is really to set up these emergency communication centers. But as soon as this is done, we will start um, the humanitarian calling operations because it's um, it's very important for people who've been affected by a disaster. Imagine you were you were affected by a, a disaster. Um, you receive aid, but you don't. Um, your family doesn't know what's going on, and you haven't had a chance to uh, 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 call your parents, for example, or call your brother abroad. Um, first of all, to give him news, but also maybe to get. Um, more personalized assistance, uh, asking to come over to uh, to help you rebuild your house, uh, maybe come over, bring some clothes, uh, things that that you cannot receive in the in the first few days, uh, maybe from from uh, an aid organization. I, I mean, I can imagine demand for something like this is pretty high. You said you you were you were in Haiti recently, mm-hmm. um, where, where you had set up this um, this this program. I mean, are are, are lines just uh, are, are lines out the door literally for to, to, to get on the phone to talk to, to friends and family? Yes. Well, they're, they're, uh, uh, they're, just to, to put it back in, in context, when we started TSF, um, it was, because it was not obvious necessarily to have uh, telecoms and humanitarian aid, but um, the founders of TSF were had two traditional humanitarian aid organizations bring food, um, uh, covers, um, um, non-telecom items, and they they would uh, travel on their holidays in uh, to Kosovo, uh, to uh, Bosnia, uh, and to I- Iraq during the the, uh, the uh, first Gulf War. And each time they would leave a car, uh, people would trust a little piece of paper into their hand. When you go home, please call my family at this number. Uh, uh, tell them on the live uh, that uncle is being killed, for example. But but this is that that I'm in this camp, in this particular camp. When they went back on the the next mission, they bought a satellite phone uh, beforehand and started uh, um, the, these what we call today the humanitarian calling operations. And people would queue to make a phone call instead of queuing for for food and medicine. Mm-hmm. So um, we have. I mean, if we put ourselves in the situation where we're, we don't have any battery left on our mobile, our computer is down, we don't have internet, we know how frustrating it is uh, to us who are used to having all these communication facilities. But imagine being in an emergency. Um, I often I give this rather uh, shocking example for some people, uh, and I can understand this, but imagine you're, you're driving in the desert, uh, your car breaks down, uh, you've got a phone in one hand and you've got a sandwich in, in the other hand. If you, unless you you haven't eaten for a week, of course, what will you do first? Will you use the phone or will you eat your sandwich? Um, I know what I would do. I would call call for help first, and once I'm sure that um, um, I'm going to be rescued, well, I'll just wait and eat my sandwich uh, uh, calmly. But uh, um, it's it's a it's a an example which, which, which shows you the importance of, uh, um, of, of telecommunications in emergencies and, um, and it's, it's this, this uh, need is, is, being, is increasing um, on, on every emergency that, we're, that we uh, deploy to. And, and so far, uh, of the emergency, of the examples you listed, um, all of them have been sort of natural disasters? 
do you do you also deploy to uh, sort of man-made disasters of war or 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 conflict zones as well? We do indeed. The, the, the uh, role of TSF of TSF is actually to to uh, uh, provide communications to aid agencies and, and those affected uh, in areas uh, either where communication infrastructure has been uh, damaged or destroyed, or where there's no there was no communications uh, uh, even before uh, the emergency. Uh, we were in Iraq, for example. Um, uh, we were um, we worked in Niger. We're, we're currently in Niger. Uh, which is driven by a, a, a famine, um, and we're, we're working in remote areas where there was no uh, telecommunications before. Um, telecommunications, the local infrastructure can also be damaged by uh, by bombings or um, or uh, uh, an arms conflict, uh, like in Lebanon, like in Iraq, in, in Afghanistan, where we where we also deployed. So we're of course uh, we're. Uh, were, were mainly deployed in, in, in disaster response, but we also deployed to conflict areas or to areas um, where there are, there's a humanitarian crisis and there were, there's simply no local uh, communication infrastructure. And, and how many people uh, do you have uh, sort of working around the world uh, that, that are for the emergency responders? We have approximately 20 full-time staff, and this is counting uh, um, Everybody, uh, um, um, not only the the uh, um, IT and telecom specialists, and then we have approximately 40 volunteers, and all these staff are, are spread on the on the four on uh, our four bases in France, uh, Nicaragua for the Americas and the Caribbean, uh, Thailand for Asia and the Pacific, and Niger for Africa. And are, do, you, do you have any relationship at all with uh, Minnesota Sans Frontier, uh, Doctors Without Borders? Uh, that's a question which actually comes up quite often. Uh, but all the, the, the Sans Frontier are, although Médecins Sans Frontier started the first uh, Sans Frontier, uh, all the different Sans Frontiers are, are, are separate organizations. So uh, we work with Médecins Sans Frontier in the field. We provide communications to Médecins Sans Frontier, uh, but we're a separate organization. Nothing in common, just just the name. The the only thing we have in common is the is the uh, the goal, which is to to help those uh, those affected mm -hmm. and uh, those suffering. And and sort of going going forward, what what are some some of the big challenges facing your uh, your organization, your your operations? Well, there there's uh, more and more demand, uh, so there's a big need for for telecommunications, uh, uh, both in emergency and outside emergencies. Uh, we also have projects in, in prevention, uh, in, in preventing food crisis, for example, in, in Niger, in doing disaster preparedness. Uh, we had a program in Nicaragua uh, at the end of last year uh, to build capacity for uh, local organizations to help them respond to the emergency using their own telecommunications equipment. So, so basically passing on our knowledge and experience to others so that they can be more autonomous and uh, and, and build their, their, their own capacity. Uh, so there's more and more demand. Um, uh, and of course, to respond to all these uh, uh, needs, you, you need funding. So I guess that the main challenge is, is, is uh, to, to make people aware that telecommunications are important in, in not only in, in emergencies, but in humanitarian aid in general. Um, just to give you an example, after the tsunami, they realized that had they um, informed people that the tsunami was arriving in Sri Lanka, uh, it took two, two to three hours for the wave to, to come to Sri Lanka, had they informed people uh, by a text message, by radio, um, whichever system, um, whichever communication system, had they informed people, many, many lives, thousands and tens of thousands of lives would have been saved. So. Um, uh, telecommunications are indispensable now um, in emergencies. The technology is there, uh, the experience is there, the capacity is is, is there. Um, but we we do need uh, further support. We're, we're very grateful to to uh, the UN Foundation and, and to the Vodafone Group Foundation for for supporting us. Um, and they, it's it's been a, a great step for in in, in TSF's history when we signed this partnership uh, and increased our, our capacity 
to deploy an emergency and to respond to to uh, um, uh, to, to crisis worldwide. It, it increased our, our our capacity drastically, but we will need. Uh, more support in, in the future because we're realizing that there is uh, more and more needs um, and um, uh, and there's so many things that we could do um, there there's uh, um, there, there's many many we could in the future think of maybe um, well it's not maybe it's something that we really want to do is, is deploy communication centers for uh, for civilians also it's not only offer free calls but maybe uh, offer internet access uh, offer email um, maybe arrange money transfers so that they, they can receive cash in emergencies. There's, the technology is there today and it's changing um, every day. There's, a, there's new equipment arriving um, and new, new things you can do that you couldn't do before. Um, and uh, we'd like to be able to apply this technology to the field because we know it can make a difference. Great. Well, well I would encourage viewers to, uh, to check out TSF's website. We'll post a link uh, to it on, on the page and uh, learn more about the organization. It's pretty fascinating. It's, it's I think, in, in, in something of an, of an overlooked but, but critically important sort of part of the humanitarian uh, uh, sort of response world. Um, Oshim, thank you very much for, for your time. And, thank you. Uh, look forward to talking to you again soon, and, and uh, maybe next time you, you, you're out in the field, you can come back on and we can talk about some of your experiences. Sure, um, and, and, and I'll be happy to show you how a communication center works and uh, how uh, a humanitarian calling operation, how we offer free calls to, uh, uh, to victims also. So be, thank you very much for, for giving us the, the, this opportunity to talk about our work, and I look forward to talking to you soon, Mark.